Okay, what we've got here is a normal standard normal distribution. That is a normal distribution with specifically a mean of zero and a variance of one. And let's be clear when I say mean of zero, we could write this as expected value of z is equal to zero because that's where it is. And this thing here is the variance of z is equal to one. Z is continuous. So here is what it looks like can go off down there to minus infinity this is the z-axis along here all the way to plus infinity and what it looks like is it's symmetrically distributed around zero where does this come from because this is the function um, it's here this is the function so putting various values of z into here for um, a mean of zero and a variance of one so that should disappear because it's variance of 1, i sigma is equal to 1. Putting various values z into here, I am going to end up with this shape. So plug in the various values and uh, plot z versus f. z, not x. Like so. Right, is everything else right? Yes, right, so nobody here to tell me what I've done wrong. All right, no, that's correct. Uh, I want to show that the MGF is this guy here. Yeah, that's correct, and that's for all t. So let's start. Let's start with a definition. M of t is equal to expected value of e to the tx. That's what you always have to remember. It's the starting ground. Just like for the Poisson one now, example I did earlier, it will value at this thing. But since um, I made a mistake, expected value of e to t times run variable. My run variable, I'm not calling it x, I'm calling it z. So that's something that's, I'm glad I did that because I guess students do that as well. Alright, so it's whatever you named your random variable, it's not always x. In this case, I've called it z. So there you go. Put z up there. Because z is continuous, I have to integrate this function here times the PDF, i.e., f of x. And that's something that I just wrote earlier. So let's just substitute that right in. Pi e to the minus a half uh, z squared, and this is the numerator, let's be clear, dz, of the possible values of z, but we know the possible values of z, because it's continuous, it goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, because of the picture I showed you, where z runs from minus infinity to plus infinity. Alright, um, so what do I deal with this? Don't be uh, kind of intimidated, it looks a terrible thing, and we don't like to do integration, but I'll show you that we do not need to do integration at all with this. Okay, so how to do it? Well, look at this guy, look at this guy. Mm -hmm. They both involve z's. So what is the point? The point is, just like the Poisson, we need to kind of th just, th just uh, recognize something that this Normal is of the form integrate uh, something, right? But I'm more interested in up here. So let's say it's some kind of constant. I'm not really interested in because it doesn't depend on z. e to the minus a half and then something squared. In this case, it's z squared. All right, dz, and that must come to 1 over all the possible values of z. So the question is, can I reorganize this thing? So that it's of something squared, because if I can, then this says that it integrates to 1. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what I mean. So just look into the, what they call this, some terminology here now, some math terminology. This thing's called the integrand, it's what we're kind of integrating. Okay. So let's just isolate these two. So let's just say now, and also it's a good thing when we're doing these kind of proofs, let's call, give this, uh, let's, uh, let's um, give this a name because we'll have to peel, 
uh, let's call this whole equation star, right? So we'll have to kind of refer back to it later. I'll tell the reader to look up there. Now, so I'm just looking here. E to the zt, or tz, times e to the minus a half z squared is equal to the e to the minus a half z squared minus 2 z t. Uh, let's call this double star. And so I want to focus on this guy here because the whole thing is can I write this with a square here? So something with a square. Uh, so if we look at it, so z squared minus 2 z t, what are you thinking? This almost looks like a quadratic function. Yeah, you usually use x squared uh, plus b x plus some kind of constant. So we're lacking a constant here. But we can complete the square here directly. Um, z, again, I made a video on completing the square, be rusty with that. z minus choice of t, because there's two lots of uh, t's here, tz's, squared. So if you multiply that, you're going to have z squared, which is that term. And you're going to have uh, minus 2zt, yes, which is that term. And then you're going to have plus t squared. Well, we have to compensate because we have plus t squared, we have minus t squared. Now then the right hand side now is equal to the left hand side. So what's the point of doing that? Let's call this three. Three stars. Well if you substitute this is what I mean by showing working now three stars into two stars you can see that this thing now is the form we want. We have e to the minus a half of put in big bracket z minus t squared minus t squared and what you're saying to yourself is uh, so what that's not exactly squared because I've got a squared on the outer term well what I've done and this is kind of more important not only do we want to put a squared on the term what we're looking at we want to separate out the z's and and uh, want to separate out the z term and the terms which do not depend on z. So here we first block depends on z. That's uh, z minus t squared. And then I have another term minus minus is a plus. Oops, plus a half t squared. So I've separated it now the z term from the t term. Doesn't matter that there's a t here. So that long as this thing looks like this thing, I is something squared. That is something squared, which depends on z, which I'm integrating over. Uh, now I'm running out of stars here. I don't know why I use stars. Um, so wh what do I want to do? I want to now, exactly, I've almost done now, because all I want to do is take this guy here. Take this guy here, and I'm going to substitute it back into star. So the whole story, remember, I just started pluck this guy, and I plucked this guy out, and that's where I got down here. And wiffle waffle, I've just got to expression where this is the equivalent of saying this. Yep. Three stars into, hang on, this three stars into two stars, yep, yep. Okay, so I substitute now into star, so let's say, um, I'm running out of stars, so let's say four stars. Uh, four stars back into stars, and I have that m t. So let's be clear that I'm still it's m t. I'm after. Let's not lose sight of that fact. Is equal to square root of two pi, and then times this thing here. Mm, let's just write down as it is. Minus a half. Of course, you don't have to write all these steps. Down. I'm just trying to do it. Put as many steps as, as I think I need. There you go. And I'm integrating over z. Don't forget. But and this is a nice bit. As before, you're integrating over z. So anything that does not depend on t z, you pull it out. Well, that's a constant I can pull it out, but I don't want it as a constant. And that depends on z, I cannot pull it out. That's a constant. It does not depend on z. I can pull it out, so I take it out. And as we're going along, you can kind of see, because I gave you the answer already, that that's the term I'm after. 
integrate 2 pi e to the minus a half z minus t squared over dz. Now, would you believe it if I told you that this thing is going to integrate to 1 because it's a normal distribution with a variance of 1 and a mean of t. If you can't see that, because uh, you haven't got the PDF of a general normal, just recognize that it's of the form that I want. It's some kind of normalizing constant times e to the minus a half times a lump of something squared, where that lump involves the z. And here it does. So I can say that this whole thing it integrates, it comes to 1, so I don't actually have to do any integration. And so I'm done. E equals e to the half t squared, and that thing is all t and the real line because you're not dividing by um, 0 at any point there. Uh, so what I was going to do in class is to actually work this out for for the class which I've just done and then ask them to do this other problem show then more generally that if x is normal distribution with a mean of mu and the variance of sigma square so you've seen that I've generalized it completely